Hey guys, and this is a deck profile for Kakashi Kyle's uh, Shabelle or Shadal You Bell deck. So I went ahead and made a Shadal You Bell deck that I feel is competitive, and I'm going to go ahead and be doing a deck profile for you guys. So if you guys are on my channel and you guys are wondering, is this a Shabelle? The Shabelle. Oh my god. Ugh, I can't talk. Is this a Shabelle deck or a Shadal You Bell deck that is being used for Vibing Y? And the answer is no. No, this one is more competitive, more dirty, as you can see. So, uh, you know, Vitamin Y for me is more of a fun aspect. Kakashi Kyle, he's the more competitive one, so, uh, you know, I wanted to go ahead and, and put my, you know, my hat in the, I don't know what the expression is, but <laughs> I just wanted to go ahead and, you know, give it a go, trying to make a competitive view battle deck, and, uh, you know, wanted to see what Kakashi Kyle thought of it. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the deck profile. So, uh, of course, we are running one of each U-Bell. You know, pretty much all of the professional U-Bell players have, are in agreement that you only need one of each. And um, mostly it's due to the fact that uh, the U-Bell decks that we are making nowadays are not revolved around U-Bell. That U-Bell is kind of just a defensive tech. And that uh, if U-Bell gets removed from play or something along like that, you know, it's not like the entire deck just falls apart, so um, you don't want Yubel to clog, you want Yubel to be the least amount uh, in your hand as possible, so running each of one form uh, should be enough to suffice. Next we run 3 Hedgehog. Hedgehog is arguably the best Shadal in the entire deck. When it's flipped, you get to add one Shadal spell or trap card from your deck to your hand, and when it's integrated by a card effect, you get to add one Shadal monster from your deck to your hand, so just all the search. Hedgehog is one of the best cards, and you should definitely be running at a 3 in not only this deck, but in just your Shadal decks in general. Next we run 3, Shadal Dragon. Shadal Dragon is really good, especially this format, uh, you know, where, you know, destroying isn't as good as it used to be. Bouncing has always been really good, uh, you know, with... Um, you know, with popular exceed decks, and, you know, you just go ahead and flip that up and bounce it back to the hand, uh, any problem cards. Also, when it is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you get to destroy a spell or trap card on the field. So, pretty much, you can turn your Armageddon Knight into an MST by just going summon Armageddon Knight, send Dragon, and Dragon will go off and pop one of your opponent's back row, which is definitely good. It is also really good, because it, it is A, a 19 beater, and B, it also has zero defense, which I will, you know, get more into detail about when I get over to that mass Chameleon. We run one Shadal Lizard. I really don't like Shadal li Lizard. It's probably my least favorite Shadal in the entire uh, archetype so far, just because it really doesn't bring anything new to the table. I mean, it's cute where, you know, when it's flip face up, you get to destroy uh, a monster on the field, but, you know, in this kind of format, do you really want to do that? I mean, you know, do you really want to try to blow up you know, Bujins that can just easily block with hair? Do you want to try to blow up Madolche so they can, you know, return the monster to their hand and then search with Ticket? Do you really want to blow up, uh, you know, a Fire Hand or an Ice Hand? You know, so Destruction's not that big right now. And, you know, Beals and just all those wonderful cars that the shot all really, really can't handle. And then its secondary effect isn't that good in my opinion either, and that's the reason why I really don't think you really should be running it. Um... This card is sent uh, to the graveyard by a card effect. You get to send one Shadal from your deck to the graveyard, so it's like an additional send. But I really have Armageddon Knight for that, so really, it's kind of like, I guess. I mean, I guess if you're sitting on Terran Karna, you can summon this, uh, poke your opponent for 18, and then it'd be destroyed. You get to send an additional Shadal, then the Shadal will get its effect. But I guess, I mean, it's okay. Me personally, I probably really wouldn't run this card in the Shadal Yubel deck. Maybe in regular Shadals, but in Shadal Yubel, it's really not needed, especially since you have like Armageddon Knight, Dark Refer and things like that. And it's really it's just really not needed. Now should we run one beast. Personally I like two beast. Just because beast is so good because you can go ahead and go normal summon Armageddon Knight, Armageddon Knight send beast draw a card. Um but, you know, this is kinda like Kakashi Kyle's competition and I, I wanted to kinda get what idea of what he wanted, so uh, I decided to go with one lizard and one beast, and me personally, I would have went with two beast and no lizard, but, um, you know, it's totally fine, I really don't mind, beast is really good, because when it's center guard by card effect, you get to draw a card, and so it's a secondary effect, when it's flip face up, you can draw two cards and then discard one, and you're probably thinking like, well, you know, you gotta set that, because you have to tribute it, and it's, you know, five star, the thing that um, can really help out Beast is Shadal Falcon, because uh, Shadal Falcon, when it is flipped face up, you can target one Shadal monster in your graveyard, except for Shadal Falcon, and special summon that card and face down to defense position, so you pretty much use Falcon to summon the Beast from the graveyard, and then flip up Beast, and then draw two, and then discard, and then when you discard, 
it was sent to the grave by card effects, so you get that shit all the fact, so that's definitely good. Um, I saw that Kakashi Kaio was running a 3, I find that uh, shit all fucking kind of cloggy, and it's really not the best, but it's definitely good to be running at 1, it does have some cute plays, making Vulcan, and uh, just, you know, kind of having its own little uh, loop with... Uh, Terran Carnate, sort of, sort of. It, 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 it's an interesting play you can do. If you're sitting on Terran Carnate, you can summon Shadow Falcon, do whatever, poke your opponent for 600 or whatever, just end. Terran Carnate will wipe the field. Shadow Falcon will be destroyed by card effects, so it will resummon itself in a uh, face down defense position. Um, if Shadow Falcon survives by your opponent, or if not, whatever, um, you know, you can flip it up go ahead and summon one with effect. Then you can go ahead and summon a four, and you can go ahead and sink in a six, sink in the Vulcan, target your terror, target your opponent's face up card, bounce them back to hand, then terror will go off and you summon Ultimate Nightmare. So you turned your more defensive play of sitting on terror into an offensive play with not only a Vulcan but also an Ultimate Nightmare. So Shut Off Hacking is really good. We run one Dark Greffer, he's like the peacekeeper of the deck, you know, knowing my luck on Vitamin Y, I always draw a form of Ebel, so it's good just to, you know, have him be able to keep track and keep uh, the peace in the deck. Uh, keep in mind that you do not get the effect of the monster that you um, that you discarded. So if you go Dark Greffer effect and you discard a Shadal, that one that you discarded, you do not get the effect, but you do get the effect of the one that you send. So Dark Greffer is uh, not as good as Armageddon Knight um, in this particular deck. But uh, it still should be ran, because he's still good. And we run 3 Armageddon Knight. 3 Armageddon Knight is arguably the best, um, one of the best monsters that you can run in this deck. And he just nets you a plus, because, you know, he's sending and you don't even neg. So literally, you can, you know, draw a card. It's just like, draw a card for free, MST one of your opponent's cards, uh, you know, search one of your Shadals, just depending on what you send. So you can just go Armageddon Knight, send... Um, you know, beast draw card, Armageddon Knight, send Dragon Pup, one of your opponent's spell or trap cards, Armageddon Knight, send uh, Hedgehog, search, Armageddon Knight, send Falcon, Falcon reset itself, so definitely Armageddon Knight's one of the best monsters you can run in a Shadow deck, and I definitely say you should be running three, because he is just going to net you so much pluses that he is definitely worth it. And we run three, Mass Chameleon. Mass Chameleon's really good in this deck, because it can not only bring back Sh Shadal Dragon, and go into, you know, rank 4 plays, and also sync 8 plays, but also it can summon Yubel in defense position with its effect negated, so when your opponent destroys Yubel, you get terror, so uh, it's more Yubel rival, and it has synchro NXT plays, so definitely really useful in this deck. Now we run our lights, we run one Thunder King Ryo, and I was noticing on Kakashi Kyle's video, he ran two wolves, and I didn't see any Thunder King Ryo, and I was shocked, I was like, you didn't... Thunder King Ryo is one of the best standalone light monsters in all of Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, if there's any light monster, like if anybody said, you know, what's a good level four light monster? I'd be like Thunder King Ryo, hands down. He's standalone. He's a 19 beater. You know, blocks some searching. Uh, he can uh, tribute himself to stop an inherent summon. He's just so good. So you know, if you draw Thunder King Ryo and you're not ready to go with the Shadow Fusion or whatever, then he is still really, really good just by himself. I mean, he's limited. For to one for a reason, right? And I go. I went ahead and went with the whole Kakashi Kyle thing and decided to run one wolf. Um, now I know the whole evidence of abstinence. There's a luck factor. You can draw this thing, and if you do draw it and you don't have a Citadel Fusion, then he's just kind of stuck in your hand for a while. But the thing that's really cool is that when he's sent from the deck to the graveyard. Uh, you can special summon it, so you can do Shadal Fusion, fuse with it from your deck if your opponent has a monster uh, special summon from the extra deck, and then Wolf would go ahead and summon itself. So you still haven't conducted your normal summon, you can go ahead and normal summon whatever, and then you can go into an XC play easily. Also, Wolf is also a 21 beater. So, um, one Wolf is cool. I saw Kakashi Kyle running two, and I was like, maybe take one of those out for a Thunder King Ryo. I think that'd be a more optimal play of the deck. Just because Thunder King Ryo is just good by himself. You draw a Wolf. He's stuck in your hand until you get a Shadal Fusion. You draw Thunder King Ryo, he's still Thunder King Ryo. So, if you're ever going to Shadal Fuse from your deck first, of course, you do Wolf. But if need be, you can go ahead and Fuse with Thunder King Ryo. Alright, that is the monsters. Next, we go into the spells. So, of course, one Dark Hole. I uh, don't know why people are taking this card out. Dark Hole is still good. It is still a staple. Um, I just love the fact that you get you can get Dark Hole and... Uh, 
even if you're winning, you know, it's still like that safety precaution that, you know what, shit hits the fan, I still got this Dark Hole. I am a big fan of Dark Hole, I will main deck in, in every deck, and if need be, I will side it out, but I would like to start game one with Dark Hole in hand. We run one foolish, just like an Armageddon Knight, go ahead and send it. You can also send uh, something that you cannot send with Armageddon Knight, being Wolf, so you can go ahead and go foolish, send Wolf. Wolf would be summoned, go ahead and summon a 4 and make a uh, rank 4 play, if need be. So, definitely foolish burial. We run one Rota, because Armageddon Knight is one of the most important monsters in the deck. You want to get Armageddon Knight as soon as possible, and as much Armageddon Knight as possible. Also, Thunder King Rhyo is good. Um, in certain situations, so he is also searchable with uh, Rota. So, uh, search power is always good. Run two Shadal Fusions. I was thinking about running three, but then, you know, I kind of agreed with, you know, Kakashi Kyle's thing, where, you know, uh, if Hedgehog can search it, then you, and uh, Fusions can grab it from the graveyard, you really don't need three. So, you can go ahead and just go, um, you know, Armageddon Knights and, uh, well, no, I, it's when it's flipped, right? Well, you're running you're still, you're running three hedgehogs, so when it's flipped face up, you can go ahead and search. Um, so, you really don't need um, three. So, that is fine. I definitely think that two is a good amount, and I agree with Kakashi Kai on that one. Run three MSTs. Um, I saw Kakashi Kai running three, and I was like, not in this format. Now, three MSTs all the way. MST is probably one of the most powerful cards in this format. You know, you got Bujins who run Tanky, who run Kaiser, you want to MST that. You going against Badolches, you want to MST that Chateau. Uh, you got to be careful with uh, artifacts. Uh, MST during their turn, so they won't get their artifact effect. So, you know, that's a little bit of tip. That's a little tip right there. But definitely, MST at 3, all day, every day, MST is great. You run 3 Limit Reverse. Limit Reverse is, you know, the best Ubel revival in, uh, that you can find. You know, it pretty much gives you terror without even your opponent input. You just do it yourself. And also, a cute play that you can actually do is you can actually Limit Reverse um, Shadow Falcon. So you can go, for example, you can um, go ahead and go, you know, Armageddon Knight, uh, send a Shadow Falcon. Um, you know, you don't have to use it to fact. Um, go ahead and activate Limit Reverse, bring back the Shadow Falcon. You have a level 2 tuner and a level 4. Go ahead and sink into 6. Sink into Vulcan. Vulcan effect. Bounce one of your opponent's face-up cards and bounce the Limit Reverse back into your hand. You know, it's not attached to anything. It was attached to Falcon, but the Falcon was used as a single material. It was not destroyed. Therefore, Limit Reverse would be stuck on the field. You bounce that card back and you get Limit Reverse back to your hand and a free bounce on your opponent and a 2,000 meter. So, um, that's one of the cool plays that you can do with Lemonverse. And now we get into the dirty traps and of course the competitive thing, so off of uh, Kakashi Kyle, he likes to run the bottomless, the warning, and the torrental, no compulse, which is totally fine. Me personally, I really like compulse. Some people see it as a neg one, but it's really depending on how you use it. Uh, but uh, definitely these three, uh, they are pretty much, people call them the holy trinity, and you run them, and any competitive deck, they are, uh, they go off when your opponent just summons a monster, you know, battle traps aren't that good this format, so, uh, definitely being able to just go off with these cards when your opponent summons, period, is just really good. Next, we run three breakthrough sk skills. I saw that Kakashi Kyle was running Phoenix Chain, and the thing is, Phoenix Chain is not that good this format. Keep in mind, you know, artifacts and, you know, uh, ignition and people main decking through MSTs, being able to just simply just break out of your Phoenix Chain just by spacing it. Uh, this breakthrough skill, you negate the monster effect. I mean, you still, they're, they can still attack with things. You negate their effect, and keep in mind is that you can go ahead and break the skill on your turn. So, that's definitely one of the major factors you can do as well, you know, with artifacts going ahead and activating their Sanctum and summoning Moglatov, and then you can just go, okay, Berkeley the skill, negate that so you don't pop me. Um, artifacts that can go into Pleiades, so, you know, go ahead and just Berkeley the skill, the Pleiades on your turn, and then go off not having to worry about, um, you know, Pleiades bouncing you, or whatever. And then we run two wiretap. Now I saw Kakashi Kyle was running Lance, and the thing is that Lance isn't that good. This uh, this meta uh, that definitely wiretap is the card to go. Uh, wiretap can block you from all them trouble trap cards. And uh, keep in mind that you know people are uh, trying to main deck that uh, that black horn of heaven. So you know what the hell is Lance gonna do to black horn of heaven? Also keep in mind, just like I showed you with the breakthrough skill, people are using breakthrough skill. So you might want to go ahead and wiretap that breakthrough skill back into the deck instead of blocking with Lance, because then it would be in the graveyard and they can go ahead and breakthrough skill you during 
their turn, and then your Ubel's effect will be negated, they can go ahead and kill it. And if you put in attack mode, then you'd be taking all that damage. So, also keep that in mind. Alright, so that was the main deck. Let's go ahead and go to the extra deck. We run two Midrash. Um, just like Kakashi Kyle, I agree, Midrash, you really don't need more than two. Midrash is good, but he ain't that good. Um, he can't be sure about your opponent's card effects, and it's a good thing that they say your opponent's card effects, because, you know, if it was, you know, just card effects, period, you can kind of sit on terror and have Midrash, that'd be a pretty OP play. And then, also, neither opponent can special summon more than once per turn, so it's going to be pretty difficult to handle Midrash and Terra Incarnate, and only be able to special summon once per turn. Um... And it also has another effect that when it's sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your Shadal Spell and Trap cards and add it back to your hand. So pretty much you get your fusion back, which is definitely good. Uh, we run two Nephilim, because you have two targets. So you go ahead, and Nephilim's pretty powerful. It's a 28 beater. Uh, when it's uh, summoned, you can send one of your Shadal uh, cards from your deck to the graveyard. And when it battles a, a special summon monster, you destroy it at the start of the damage step. So it's pretty much like a catastrophe for just special summon monsters, period, not just non-dark. So uh, definitely good. And just like uh, Midrash, it has it when it's sent from the sent to the graveyard. You can target one Shadal Spell Trap card in your graveyard and add that target back to your hand. So pretty much refund you for your Shadal Fusion that you used. Uh, we run one Scrap Dragon because you can go into Scrap Dragon with um, Mass Chameleon, and um, it's one of the best. Uh, Sync eights that you you know you can name off, and also keep in mind you can go scrap dragon effect, target one of your shadows, target one of your opponent's cards, destroy them both, and then you will go ahead and get your shadow effect. So uh, you can be netting some pluses depending on what you pop with scrap dragon. We run one crimson blader. Like I said, this deck can go into eights, and crimson blader is one of the best eights you can go to, especially with artifacts being one of the you know the meta decks. You can go ahead and slice up a artifact monster, and they won't be able to you know do anything with the next turn. Although the artifacts are summoned during your turn, but you know um, there's other decks that you can hit like uh, you know heretics and stuff like that. You know, slice an e dragon down, and they can't summon it back next turn. So uh, crimson blader is always good. Uh, you know, um, you bell kind of has a bad matchup against Frog Monarchs, so uh, you can go ahead and summon Crimson Blader, slash up one of their frogs, and they won't be able to tribute for a Monarch, because it's Normal Summon or Special Summon level 5s or higher next turn. You run one Star of Spark, because, you know, Star of Spark is pretty much the go-to defense sync 8 that you go to in uh, when you can sync for 8. You know, this deck cannot make bills like that, so you, next best thing is Star of Spark Dragon, so you can go ahead and just make that and defend itself or other cards. You run one Vulcan the Divine. I already said the cute plays that you can do with it with uh, Falcon. So, you know, Falcon the Divine, go ahead and bounce back a face up card. Either it be a Terra Incarnate turn into Ultimate Nightmare, or maybe just a Limit Reverse that's just stuck on the field. So, definitely good. Now we go ahead and go into the Xyz. We run one King of Feral Imps that can go ahead and search you for a uh, Mass Chameleon, which is definitely a great play. Uh, Mass Chameleon is one of the key cards in this deck as well. So, you know, it's great that you can search them. Run one black ship. Black ship is actually really good this format. I actually wanted to go ahead and uh, talk about this card on a later video, but definitely one of the things that people are main decking and using right now in the competitive circuit is the fire and ice hand. So, what better way to hand a, a fire and ice hand but simply just sending it to the grave instead of just you know destroying it and them getting their effects. Run one level of chain. Level of chain is also very important for setup. It can also send and get you one of your um, shadow effects, or if need be, you can target, uh, you can choose a monster and put it on top of your deck if you ever choose to do that effect. Then we got some staples, of course, 101, Exiton. I don't need to go into detail about that. Bist Dweller. Bist Dweller is definitely good. Locking down that graveyard. Fuck artifacts, definitely. So lock it down. And of course, Gaga -ga -ga Cowboy. Go ahead and go bang bang ski ski gg on your opponent. Uh, no, some people do not want to be using having this card in the extra deck, and I say you're going to regret it because Cowboy is so good. You know, there's definitely times where I just summon, I have two fours, and I go poke, poke. Oh, you're under 800, main phase two, make a Cowboy bang bang ski ski gg. You know, instead of having to wait a whole another turn to go ahead and end the duel, you don't know which opponent may have up their sleeve that may, to possibly end the duel. Maybe they were thinking that they could take the damage on the chin, and then they'd have another turn to go off, but nope. Main phase 2, Cowboy just says, bang, shoot you in the foot. So, this was my uh, competitive Chabelle or Shadal deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for all the support, and, uh, uh yeah. Maybe we can do more deck profiles like this more often, and I timed out did act inactivity. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching.